Minecraft. Pretty is how some people might describe the new emerald ore texture in Minecraft 1.3. And that's what we're going to do today in Exploration and Tactics. This is episode number 66, and Brian is going to head over into an extreme hills biome once again, about a day's journey to the east of my village home. And we are going to do some caving underground with our silk touch pick, along with an ender chest, in order to go looking for emerald ore, as well as other goodies. What else are we going to find? You'll have to watch to find out. Let's get started. Welcome back to Exploration and Tactics with Brian. And in the previous episode, we had traveled about a half a day's journey to the north to an ice biome, where I got lots of ice with my silk touch pick. And speaking of silk touch, can you use it on these shrubs? No, that did not pick up the shrub. Uh, so I don't know if it's possible to obtain these little shrub things. Um, but yes, basically, I think what I want to do today is I continue to need to collect slime balls, but then the other thing I want to do with Silk Touch is go back to the Extreme Hills biome uh, where there was emerald ore, and I found two emerald ore when I was exploring over there, but just kind of left it in the walls. And I'm starting at this point to kind of tax my ability to have a complete mental model of the world and everything that I found so far. Uh, but basically, I think we're going to go back there. I think I can still find those two emerald ores, and then we'll continue doing some caving and exploring and gathering some more materials. I'll also bring the fortune pick along if we find some diamonds. And apparently my inventory is all filled up with who knows what crap. And so, I don't know. Oh, of course, because we were doing the experiments with boats. I was like, I don't know why I'm carrying two boats on me. But that would be why. And yeah, so basically I'm going to get some inventory, including I think I will stop by the end and pick up the ender chest, and that will give us kind of extra inventory from we're doing caving far away from home uh, that then I can send back via the ender chest. And so I'm going to grab the ender chest and then head over to the silk, uh, silk biome, the, what do you call it? extreme hills biome that's way over that way to the north-southeast. And yeah, I'll meet you guys over there. I might have to do some farming before I leave. All right, here we are in the end, and my understanding is if you mine the ender chest with a normal pick, you just get the obsidian back, but if you mine it with the silk touch pick, you actually pick up the ender chest and can take it with you. Yes, all right, and so I'm going to take that with me on my journey. But in any case, we will go to the extreme hills biome and do some more caving and get a whole bunch of cool resources. So I will meet you guys over there. Well, that was cool for just a moment, like I saw... I don't know if I saw through the world or what I just saw there right before it teleported me back to my bed. It looked kind of cool. I was walking across the desert over in the direction of the Extreme Hills biome that's across the ocean. And I think I may have found a skeleton dungeon. Because a moment ago I heard a skeleton. And this definitely looks like, yes, it is a skeleton dungeon. Hooray! Well, this is, will be a nice little kind of side diversion. Hello, skeleton. I should go ahead and eat some beef. Delicious steak. Before I come visit you in your home. Hello. And he's not even caring to look at me. He's just going to shoot right out of the back of his head. All right. And so I will do the usual mopping up of this dungeon. And so I will take a minute to get all the sand out of here and kill any of the bad guys. And we will mine up the moss stone and check out the things. And probably go back to the Hall of Structures because I haven't gone very far and set up our little skeleton uh, dungeon monument thing or whatever. And then we'll go to the Extreme Hills biome. So I'll see you guys in just a moment. This dungeon has quite the cheaty sand on the roof. This should be fun. We I guess I should have put torches under all of that before I did that. Oh well. Um, that will now be my staircase out. In any case, there are two chests I have not looked inside yet, so let's see what we've won. Eh, usual kind of stuff there. And there. All right. Well, I will still happily take all of that stuff. And yeah, like I said, I'm going to be... Oh, I need to mine up the... Darn it. I need to mine up the moss stone out of here as well. So yeah, I am going to take all this stuff home before we go on our trip to the extreme hills. So I will see you guys in a moment. All right, and so we are back home at our Hall of Achievements Pyramid. And not sure what wall I should put this against. I guess maybe I will go ahead and take the Desert Temple blocks and go ahead and move them kind of up here to show a count of four like that. 
and then perhaps over here that will be my representation for a skeleton and so we've found one skeleton spawner yeah i'm still looking for kind of like better ideas for how to display this but for right now it's just important to have the count so i can always update the display later and make it more beautiful but in any case, that is cool, another structure, and additionally, a skeleton spawner. Uh, I could turn into a trap to farm for arrows and bones, uh, and so that might be something that I do in the future. But in any case, now once again, hopefully without distraction, I will head back off towards the Extreme Hills biome, and once again, we will try to go on our mission of mining up the... I went ahead and I got a fresh pick and a fresh sword... Uh, the emerald ores with silk touch as well as exploring and lighting up and getting some other materials so I will see you guys over there once again all right and we sailed across the ocean and we're back at the extreme hills and back into the same shaft that I dug out last time wow and the blocks since I haven't been in these chunks didn't even have time to despawn how nice all right and so I am going to try to find my way back out it seems to me that there was a uh was it a zombie dungeon I forget what kind of dungeon it was uh, somewhere down here that I had visited, and that was one of the places that had an ore right by it, and so that is where I'm going to try to get to, assuming I can find it again, and so we'll start from there, and so I'll meet you guys when I'm there. All right, and I've not found the dungeon yet, but I did find Emerald Ore! So I will grab, I hear some skeletons, the silk touch pick, and we will pick that up, and that will be a very rare block. Uh, in this particular world, and so now if I remember, the dungeon and the other ore are not far from here, but I think it wasn't in this direction. Let's see. It's coming around this way. Mm, trying to remember. Oh, I see cobblestone over here. Maybe this is it. No, this is not the dungeon, but I do think possibly the other emerald ore is right over here. No, this is not the right spot. All right. It seems to me that my sense of direction after a number of days since the last time I've been back here is not quite as good as I might have hoped. And so we'll have to do... Ooh, I didn't even realize there's a... Ooh, careful. <laughs> do not want to fall in the lava. That would be bad. In any case, there's a lot to explore around here, a lot to mine up around here. And so I guess at this point, we're just kind of caving. Hello, we're caving. Huzzah, I'm running around in circles as well. And yeah, I'm not sure that I have any topics to talk about right now. And so until I think of any, I will probably do some judicious editing until interesting things happen. So I'll see you guys when I see you. More beautiful green ore in the ceiling, more ugly green creepers coming around the corner to sneak up on me. God! And they are still very hard to kill. Like, sprint jumping, backing up, uh, no matter what I do, I am having a hard time escaping their destructive blast zone. And I've seen now six creepers in a row come out of the cavern that's over here. Which is presumably just coincidence. Uh, but nevertheless, it's like, yuck. Quite the cavern of creepers. And so I know there's still the emerald ore in the ceiling, but I just want to get a sense of what other badness is over here. Oh, another emerald ore in the ceiling. All right. Well, apparently, the creepers are just attacked at, bleh, attracted to ores that are the same beautiful color that they are. Green! Actually, I don't like green as much as some people. I'm looking at you, Etho. Uh, green's not a bad color. But there are other good colors as well. And... Alright, in any case, I think I feel kind of safe enough around here. Hello, would you like to go in the lava? You would? That's great, Mr. Zombie. Alright, let's go mine us some emeralds and some other stuff. And so, I hear another zombie falling somewhere. Oh, but it sounds like he has fallen into lava. All right. So I got my silk touch pick to get the emerald ore block right there. And then there's another emerald ore block right over here. And I guess for the heck of it, 
we can just practice. We don't really need to, but basically, whenever we have precious valuables that we're afraid of losing, we could always put down the ender chest, put away the precious valuables, and in fact, I'll go ahead and just kind of, since I have it out, go ahead and offload some other ores and things that I've been collecting so far in there, and then pick up the ender chest again, and we're ready to go. Uh, and so that'll be an easy way to kind of manage our inventory, and so we'll be able to be collecting ores for quite a while down here, assuming I manage to stay alive, which I intend to. And so once again, I'll go back to kind of like mining things up and looking for things, and I will bring you guys back in as appropriate. Okay, I do not know how uh, common or uncommon emerald ore is, but I am only a couple steps from where I left you a moment ago. And, believe it or not, there is more emerald ore right here. And so, coolio, I am having some good luck with my first big search for emerald ore. And I'm still pretty sure that there's one in the wall near the dungeon that I have lit up already that I have not yet rediscovered. And so, so far, this is a very profitable mining mission. Hmm, what's that over there in the wall? Oh, I believe it's emerald ore. Boom noodle. You all may have noticed already, but I didn't notice until just now, that I neglected to take a fortune pick with me. Uh, I haven't found any diamonds, although I have been mining redstone without fortune. Um, but yes, so I guess if I do find diamonds, what I will do is I will mine them with my silk touch pick, and then we'll bring them back home, and then we'll remine them with the fortune pick. So that's another advantage of silk touch, is basically you can put off fortuning them until later. Also, one other thing that I should mention uh, is that we do have a secondary mission. In addition to just mining up resources, we are also gathering up more experience wind chimes. Uh, because the next thing that I want to enchant, it occurs to me, if I have my ender farm and the ender that I can use to gather up ender pearls, the other thing that you need to get, uh, have in order to go with ender, ender pearls is good feather falling boots. And so I was reading about enchanting, and it appears that level 23 is the ideal level to try to enchant some diamond boots with, uh, to get feather falling for. Um, and so that is what I would like to try to do. Uh, and so basically when we're at level 23, which actually might be pretty soon, uh, I may want to head home. Oh, that's unfortunate. This is kind of a distance to get between here and home. Uh, but I may want to head to home so that I can try to enchant some boots. So we'll see how quickly that happens and, yeah, see how it goes. And basically, if there aren't any mobs around, then I go ahead and I just eat rotten zombie flesh uh, after my food bars get down three or four bars. When there are mobs around or when I need kind of like better food recovery mechanisms, that's when I switch back to the steak. I could have just taken a stack of steak. I have tons of steak at this point. Um, but for whatever reason, I only took, I didn't notice exactly how much steak, like 16 pieces or something. And so I'm already going through it pretty quickly. And so I'm using some zombie flesh to supplement my food stores when I don't really need great food. Um, and yep. I'll bring you guys back in as needed. Oh, look what I found. It's a diamond. I will have to mine it with Silk Touch. And there is a little bit of a chance that there's a lava down here, so let's be a little careful. All right. Silk Touch diamonds. La, 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 la. Oh, wow. How many diamond ore blocks was that? Nine. I rarely find a vein that large. If you go back to Exploration and Tactics, uh, the kind of original series, probably around like episode, I want to say like 132 or something, uh, I once found a vein of 13 diamonds, uh, and I don't think they actually come in veins that big, and so I was, think it was two veins that were like directly adjacent to one another, uh, but 13 is definitely the record for the most number of diamonds I found all together in one area. Uh, but nine is pretty darn good, and so that is pretty awesome, and there's some gold up here as well. Um, but yes, I just wanted to share that with you, because you always like to see diamonds. Ooh, careful with the falling gravel, Brian. And yeah, once again, I'll make another cut. Guess what I found? If you said skeletons, you're right! If you said emerald ore, you're also right, but you'll be right in a moment. Hello, skeleton! Hello, other skeleton! 
Hello, third skeleton, whom I did not expect. Boom Noodle. And I actually hear another skeleton in some adjacent cavern. But he will just have to wait. Because we have both some tasty, tasty iron. Which, I have so much iron, I don't know what to do with. I'm going to have to build a sky rail just to get rid of my iron. But also, Emerald Ore! Woohoo! Well, that was a good job killing that creeper. It does sound like there are a number of baddies around here. I also hear a skeleton and an enderman. And so this could be a little bit exciting. So let's see who we encounter. I'm just trying to quickly run through a bit here and light things up. But I've not yet seen... All right, here's a zombie. Hello, zombie. And there is a creeper. Definitely a few more friends around here. I was trying to back away, and I ran into... That brick right there. So I stopped backing away, and then the creeper started exploding, and I was like, well, oh well. He is just going to blow up. Take his zombie pal with him. I'm calling him a zombie pal, but I don't really know if the creeper and the zombie were pals. Perhaps, perhaps they were just casual acquaintances. Perhaps they'd never met before, until just this moment, when they both decided to attack me. I guess we'll never know. We're never going to hear their live story, life stories. Because their lives were cut short. By me! Alright, let's cut off some of the water over there. And it's still kind of dangerous around here, I think. And so let's try to light a little bit more up before we go mining up all of these delicious resources. Let's try to get a safer kind of way to get up here and see what all is up here. Because this seems to be a pretty, pretty wide open bit. Oh my goodness. Alright, I see the creeper. Gosh. No. Nope. Where's the skeleton? I saw the arrow come flying out at me, but I did not see the skeleton at all. There he is. Alright, he... Managed to fire an arrow right before... Oh my goodness! That's the other thing I need to remember, which is if the creepers can't see you, they can't detonate. And so I should just get out of the creeper's own line of sight. Rather than trying to always use... Oops. Distance. As the way to make the creepers go away. Oh, you're... Oh my goodness. Do you see how many skeletons are here? Fortunately, two of them are in a crossfire of their own. Um, I am still gaining hearts, and I still do have a full suit of iron armor, and so I'm not in too bad of a shape. Uh, but that was three skeletons all of a sudden. It kind of caught me by surprise. Oh, why are you shooting at me when the other guy has been shooting at you? That's just not nice. Silly skelly. All right, there's an Enderman over there. Let's not look at him. Don't talk to him. And, uh, da -da 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 -da. oops, another skeleton. My goodness, how many arrows do I have on me? Um, 29. All right, I have plenty, so if I want to take him apart at a distance, I do not mind doing that. I believe I have power one bow, and so I should be able to two-shot him. Yes, hooray. Running a little bit low on torches, and so this would be a good place to sing. Torches, torches, torches! Brian needs more torches. Hooray! Ooh, and in just a moment, we are going to have enough... Oh, I see him at level 23. I really don't want to go back home this early, so I think maybe instead I'll get up to level 30. And we'll go enchant another pick or a shovel or something, and we'll try for feather falling a different time. Uh, what is that I see? Oh, it's lava. I saw the little kind of like spark flying off. I wasn't sure what I was looking at the first time. Um, yeah, because basically I would like to stick around here. It really is quite a hike uh, from home to get over here. And so until we build a sky rail or uh, a nether system to kind of get between one place. I hear something else. Or is that me swimming, I guess I hear? I don't know. I'm worried that I hear an enemy swimming somewhere. And water currents. Oops, let's not fall in the lava. Are still a little bit fidgety as well. And apparently we might be coming back up from under the ocean over here, it looks like. And so let's just see if I can close that up and get rid of this water. Oh, nope, there's more cave behind here. No, there's not more cave behind here. All right, but based on the sand, 
That seems to be coming up from underneath the ocean, and so we've probably gotten pretty high up at this point. And yes, I did still hear swimming, but perhaps that is in some adjacent cavern. All right, and so at this point, I think I've got a fair bit of things kind of lit up to where I can just go back to mining some resources. Or perhaps not well enough lit up because there's still bad guys afoot. All right, here we go. Finally killed another creeper. Really need to continue working on that. All right, Enderman over there is not a threat. And I believe at this point my inventory is filled up, and so I think we're going to throw down the under chest uh, and get a sense of how much... Yep, definitely need to throw down the chest. And so I'm just going to stand back a little ways just to make sure I'm a little bit safer. But let's put an ender chest on the ground and then fill it with all of these exciting ores as well as sure I will go ahead and throw some cobblestone in there as well but keep some cobble on my bar because you always want to have blocks on your bar I could put these things away yeah that's good enough we have plenty of inventory space once again so that is super cool and so now I can go back to the work of mining yeah this is basically I feel like it basically effectively more than doubles your inventory. Um, just because it's just like I've never played a, you know, like a Vex map or 3-2 map or uh, one of kind of the challenge survival maps um, multiplayer, which I think would be fun to do. Uh, but one thing that I rarely see people take good advantage of is the fact that two people's inventory is... Uh, Quite a, fit, quite a fair bit larger than twice as much as one person's inventory. Because when you have two people, you know, if one person has, you know, like half a stack of gravel and the other person has half a stack of gravel, um, one person can hand his gravel to the other person and it still only takes up the one inventory slot. And so basically, when each person has a small number of certain items, if they just kind of share the items, so one person takes all of them and the other person takes all of a different set of items... Uh, then you can end up, you know, fitting way more than you could if you just kind of like doubled the number of inventory slots. If that makes any sense, I'm not sure how well I'm describing this. Uh, but basically, yeah, basically if you're with two people and it's the same kind of thing with the under chest, basically um, I feel like you can use the more inventory slots to then stack up items that would otherwise be cluttering up your inventory with just, you know, less than a full stack of stuff. Um, and so those temporary kind of inventory slots uh, would really help out a lot for inventory management. At least I expect that's how it's going to turn out. And so, yeah. That is one of the reasons that I've been looking forward to the Ender Chest. All right. And actually, it does look like that is a different kind of piece of the cave system that I have not yet explored. And so let's try swimming up this little waterfall. Oh, no, I have explored up the top, and it is pretty much vertical. I'll go ahead and... Oops. Not there. Destroy that water source. Make sure that... Oops. Things are kind of well enough lit over here that monsters aren't going to spawn. And find a different direction to go. All while mining. Precious resources. Oh, so precious. Coal, you're the most precious resource in the world because you give me the most wind chimes. Huzzah! And yes, I'm aware that some of the coal just fell into the lava, but I did manage to harvest some of the wind chimes before it did, and so it's all good. All right, continuing on, I'll make a cut and see you guys in a little bit. All right, that enderman is holding a piece of dirt, and I believe he is completely trapped in to this tiny little area. And so, A, he will be very easy for me to kill. Uh, but B, he must have, like, teleported or then walked and, like, fell into that little area. And so I think it's rare, if ever, uh, that I've ever kind of, like, seen an Enderman who kind of, via his own walking or teleportation, got himself stuck in that tiny little trap. Uh, stuck by virtue of the fact that he's so tall, he was kind of, like, strangled in at the neck. Um, and so I just thought that that was a little bit interesting. And maybe you didn't think that was interesting. In which case, you're like, Brian, why are you bringing us back in to show us trivialities like Enderman being stuck in a little neck brace underground? In which case, I don't know what I have to say for myself. I don't know what I was thinking. 
I shouldn't be wasting your time with that. I should wait for far more exciting things to bring you guys back in. Such as the skeleton who's coming to shoot me. Oh no, it's a skeleton. Guess what? I've got a power one bow. You are dead, sir. All right, I will see you once again in a little bit. You guys know the drill. All right, I just realized that I'm underneath the ocean. And admittedly, I should have realized that before. I'm just looking on the screen and it says ocean uh, over underneath my coordinates is the biome. Um, but it occurred to me another advantage of playing it with large biomes is that once you do get into an extreme hills biome, which is the only place that you can find the emerald ore, uh, yeah, since the biomes are big, it means you'll be able to find tons and tons of emerald ore, uh, theoretically. I just want to take a quick look, since it's a nice deep ravine at the lava layer, just to kind of glance around and see if I see any diamonds or anything... But I don't see anything too exciting over here. It is a nice big ravine. Uh, it could be fun to explore, but I think I'm going to head back in the direction I came and try to get back into the extreme hills, because the main reason I'm out here is try to collect emerald ore, uh, just because they're pretty, they're rare blocks, uh, and I would enjoy collecting them and then possibly like placing them decoratively in some structure at some point. And so I'm going to head back over this way and see if I can find some more. I have apparently wandered back into the Extreme Hills biome because there's more emerald ore. Huzzah! Oh yes, and I found some more of my own torches. Great, let's keep exploring over in this direction. And I'm at level 25, and so I still have a little bit of exploring I can do before I need to head home to do some more enchanting. It's time for item repair! Do 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 do! Huzzah! Look what I found! It's some emerald ore! Alright, well I found my way back up to the surface. I'm only at level 26, um, but I think I found a good stopping point. And so I think I'm going to try to head home. Let's see, I need to head to the north at west. And so that is this way. Because recall... There's this kind of L on the cobblestone, and the bottom point of uh, the bottom part of the L points north, uh, and so the top part, the long part of the L points west, and west happens to be the direction back to the ocean and back towards my house, and so we should be able to see the ocean just over this hill. Sure enough, there we do. And yeah, 26 is also. I think it actually might be the level that has maximal odds of getting feather falling, and so this is not a bad chance to go try to enchant some diamond boots as well. It's a little bit of a waste of uh, levels because I think it's only slightly better, uh, like 61% versus 60% or something, if I'm remembering correctly. In any case, uh, this is a good time to head back home. So I'll see you when we're back home, and we will do some enchanting of some diamond boots uh, as well as some fortuning of, oh, I guess we can't see them because they're hidden away in the under chest, uh, some fortuning of the diamond ore blocks that I've put away. Um, and then we can also, oh my gosh, I'm going to have so much stuff smelt up. It's going to be crazy town. See you guys when I'm back home. All right, I am back home. I dumped all of the loot stuff in the chest. And for a relatively short trip, that was not bad. Um, and I said that we were going to do this, so let's do this. Let's take our beautiful nine diamond ore blocks. Let's set them out in front of us, although we're going to have to grab a fortune pick, which would be this guy. Do, 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 do. And let's see what we can fortune up. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh, and it just gave us more experience that I didn't really need to. 23 diamonds. Uh, so there you go. That is super cool. You can see all of our spoils from that particular trip. And so, yeah, I guess let me go ahead and grab... We can do this right now. Four of those diamonds. Let's go ahead and make some boots. And 27 is not quite ideal, but that is okay. I believe if I put a torch... If I put a torch there, can I reach level 27? I think I'll be short. I can only reach level 24 there. I actually have not set up this enchanting system uh, kind of ideally for doing this. I think maybe that'll give me level 27. Let's find out. 22, 22, no. Uh, right, maybe I just need just that one in the corner. 
26, 26, right, if I want to get 27, can I get 27 out of this in any configuration? I had not thought this through. I actually have some extra books in here. And, oh, it doesn't hurt. I could break down bookshelves. I'm actually going to break down bookshelves here and spread this out a little bit and put another bookshelf over here so I can turn off one bookshelf at a time. Is that what I need to do? Why is this? That should only be blocking just... This is the only bookshelf that that torch should be turning off, I think. Is it affecting this one? Because I'm pretty sure it always shows you the maximum level that you can get. If I do this, I should have 30, right? Um... Yeah, I usually like to understand these things better before I do them on camera, so I don't look foolish. Um, but here is what I think. I think if I destroy a bookshelf over here, grab those books, recraft them into bookshelves again so that I can replace them, which involves adding back the wood, which for whatever reason gets destroyed. And then if I, oops, take this bookshelf, and then if I were to place this... Uh, any location is kind of awful. Let's put it right here. And then if I put a torch here, this torch is only blocking this bookshelf. And so now I think I'll get to level 28 because I think each bookshelf gives you two extra things. Yes. Okay, now I'm at 28. Uh, but I want to get 27. And the odd-numbered high-level enchantments are actually pretty difficult to get at this point. And so I think I'm going to cheese it, and uh, rather than try to get 27, I'll just try to get 28, because I can easily get some more experience by doing something like that. Hooray, I'm at level 28 now. Great. I figured I had stuff left over in the furnaces. All right, so 28 is probably not the ideal level, but let's go for Feather Falling. Feather Falling 4 and Protection 3. That's actually super cool. I do not plan to be ender pearling around anytime soon, but I am very happy after a number of pieces of bad luck with high level enchantments on other tools that I got a very good enchantment with my 28 levels there on the diamond boots. And so at some point when I gather up lots of ender pearls, we can just go flying around this world with wild reckless abandon since we'll have feather falling four. All right, so that is gonna be super cool. And it is the middle of the day, and I have some farming to do. I want to make sure I sleep in this bed, because I've been sleeping in beds in other places and then breaking the bed. Uh, and so I want to make sure I have a good spawn point, and so I'm going to do some farming, and I'll see you guys in a moment. Meow, 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 meow. So, of course, that is a song that I expect many of you will recognize as kind of the Final Fantasy victory music. And in that case, it was intended to be from the original Final Fantasy for the Nintendo Entertainment System, uh, which was a great game uh, that I owned and played a lot as a kid. I think someone was asking uh, what this is. This is just jungle wood with cocoa beans on it. Um, where the cocoa beans have grown into their cocoa bean plants. Um, so if you haven't been in a jungle biome and experienced cocoa beans, uh, that's what it looks like. You can plant them on the jungle wood, and then eventually they grow in three stages into that big kind of orange lit up thing. Um, and yes, that is cocoa beans. And as you can see, I've been farming quite a bit of them. All right. In any case, I think that this might be a good place to end the episode. I haven't checked on how long this footage is going to be, so let's cross our fingers and hope that it's the right amount. Uh, but in any case, I hope you enjoyed the video, and next time, I'm not sure what we're going to do next time, so you'll just have to wait and see. In any case, I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you again soon.